So, Mark, you want to do another Venn diagram? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, we have another example. Some bats are pets. No pets are rocks. Um, although there were some, a pro was a product called the Pet Rock. I never bought one, but okay. I had friends who did. All right. I don't think they exist anymore. So, no bats are rocks. And uh, what standpoint are you going to assume when you symbolize this? Well, since I assume you're a normal person, I know I'm a normal person, I'm going to figure you know that bats exist, you know that pets exist, so we're going to take the traditional interpretation. And the use X is, standpoint. We'll, and this, we'll assume that, the sub, that, the, that there are bats and pets, yeah. okay? Yeah. So do you want to symbolize this? And Let's go ahead and do I mean, that. Uh, Diagram sure, it, I sure. mean. Okay. Yeah. Again, I like starting off by abbreviating. I like to see the structure of the argument. So we have some BRP. Then we have no P or R. And no B or R. Let's have the conclusion by convention here at the bottom when I do this abbreviation. I like doing this because I like to see the students understand and can visualize the structure of the argument. We'll now label uh, the argument. The first thing we do is draw our circles, and then we'll label it. The lower left one will be lower left, lower right, lower right, kind of like a big triangle. Up at the top of the point, you'd have one more letter, P is left up, so this upper circle was gonna, will be P. Now we look at the premises. We have a particular premise and a universal premise. When you have one of each, what you want to do is the universal premise first. If you don't do it, if you do this guy first, what you end up doing is drawing an X for this, and you end up using shading to cut out part of the part of the X. It's just a grisly, horrible thing. It's like the legs are cut off an X. You really want to do this. Just try it on your own wrong, and you'll see exactly what happens. I'm going to do it right, though. The universal premise gets done first. No pets or rocks. No P or R. I'm looking at the P and the R circles. This, and I know we're talking about P's, that's a subject term. None of them are in the R circle, so none of them will be in here. And you shade where things are not. So I'll go ahead and shade that. Second premise is going to be some B or P. It's the second premise I'm going to diagram. I'm focusing on the B and the P circle. Some B or P, you just visualize this. Here's the B circle, there's the P circle. A particular statement will get an X. And some B or P tells me that some of these B's are inside the P circle. So there would be an X somewhere in there. Somewhere in that area here, which is this area. So I need to have an X in there. There's two quadrants, but this quadrant's already shaded out. There's only one place left for me to put an X. If this quadrant here had not been shaded, if both these were unshaded, I wouldn't know to put the X to the left or to the right. So what I do is I would have put the X on that line. But since this is shaded, I'm just going to put the X right there in the only place left for it to be. Now, since we're giving this a traditional interpretation, I ask myself, you know, do bats and, bats and, pets, bats and pets exist? If I look at the bat circle, there's bats existing right there. So I'm done diagramming as far as the bats go. And as far as pets go, there's a pet right in existence right there also. So we're done diagramming. This would be a picture of the traditional interpretation. I might ask myself now, is there enough information in that picture to absolutely guarantee that no B or R? And in my mind, or in scratch work if you want to do it that way, I'm focusing on the B and the R circles. No B or R would have this area here shaded. Is there enough information here to absolutely guarantee that all this would be shaded? No, this is a mystery area. So this argument is invalid. The premises do not give enough information to absolutely guarantee the conclusion. By definition, that makes it an invalid argument. Want to jump in here, Paul? Okay. Oh, that's very nice. And I think this is an example of an interesting phenomenon. To many people, this categorical syllogism would look valid at first. It sort of seems valid if you don't think about it too much. And the diagram pictures the logical relationships between the parts and shows us visually that it's not valid. But at first it may look valid to many people. But there's another point I want to make, and that is about the empty regions of the diagram. I don't think we made this yet in our presentations. An empty region that's not shaded and not X'd, it's it, you have to be careful. It does not, an empty region does not mean that there's nothing there. 
This region here is all empty, for instance, and so is this. But the fact that it's empty doesn't mean that there's nothing in there. The emptiness simply means we have no information about what's there. So the shading tells us nothing's there, the X tells us something's there, and a, and a, and a region that's simply not marked simply tells us we have no information about what's there or not there. So it's important to remember that. And I, and I do want to emphasize again that in some of the videos we did these the other way around, and if you flip this down and have these two on top and this on the bottom, you'll get the same result either way. It doesn't matter whether your diagram is this way or flipped this way. It, it's going to work the same either way. Let's emphasize that. That's very nice. Okay.